The Majestic V7530S also has excellent large casters with very, very nice brakes. Without the brakes on, the instrument moves easily and will roll quite with just a touch. Quite, quite well with just a touch. With the brakes on, the brakes are, of course, both on the side of the player. As you can see, they have large points where your feet will be able to get to them. With the brakes on, the instrument won't move, even with quite a bit of pedaling action. The next step is to show the teardown of the Majestic microphone because unlike most schools, I move it in pieces because I don't have a large truck. I have a station wagon which in pieces this fits into, but not all at once. So I carefully remove the keys. Set them off to one side. This is much easier if you push the pedal down so that the keys are free to move. The next step is to remove the cocked pulley belt, which helps if you start one side, turn it a little bit, and then it comes off the other. After removing the belt, you're free to remove the resonators. Don't try to remove the resonators without taking the belt off first. Not recommended. A nice feature about these resonators, especially the accidental resonators, where you can see that it's almost flat at the top. It does have a slight arch going back down, but this makes it much easier to stack in the car so that you don't have to um, stack your, your resonators with those long arches that are typical of most vibraphone resonators. It's a nice feature included by Majesty there. Take off my stick bag there. And the next step for me is always to remove the pedal pull rods. And they, you just loosen these knobs right along the side. And as is typical, they have a spring-loaded hook at the top. But what's not typical is that they have a very large uh, pulling mechanism. So the knob here that you pull on is large and easy to pull. And so far, in about two months of ownership and moving this instrument, I haven't had to get a pair of pliers up to get it off like you do with um, a number of other instrument makers. I always turn the pull rods in so that I can then move the instrument easily when the pedal is detached. And I'll show you that in just a minute. There. Now, the key bed is a one-piece key bed. In other words, the slats that hold the bars don't remove. You shouldn't remove the damper bar either, though you can adjust it from underneath. The key bed is held onto the frame by knobs that have bolts in them. They're very easy to remove. You just unscrew it. They are held in there, but there are four at each corner of the key bed. Two on the small end, which then frees the key bed to be lifted up, and two on the large end. Removing all four, plus the pull rods, of course, lifts the slats, the end pieces, and the motor entirely off the frame. As you can see, with this size of a key bed, you will need a little bit of room in your car. I do have, again, like I said, a station wagon, and I have plenty of room for all the pieces of the instrument. Continuing in the same theme, Majestic has used knobs all the way around the instrument to hold it together. Now, it, it is possible that these knobs could get lost because these, unlike the knobs that hold the key bed on, are removable and apparently a little bit slippery, but if you just don't unthread them over the leg and leave them slightly threaded in to the frame piece, you can just leave it in there 
when you move. Great brakes there. So as you can see, just slide off the edge, and there's the frame piece. This is one piece, a height adjustable frame piece. So set that to one side. And this is the pedal mechanism with the cross pieces that reinforce the frame diagonally. Lift it up, not quite far enough. There we go. And personally, I move it just like that. Now, these cross pieces are removable, but like this, the pedal and the cross pieces transport in one easy to move piece. You don't have to take it apart. That saves one more step when you're rushing from gig to gig. If you have a long haul in, or if you have to haul in several pieces, it's better to be able to move quickly with one piece rather than one, two, three pieces, and then extra knobs that can also be removed. The instrument goes back together in the same way and is quite quick, as I can attest to from several gigs. <laughs> Sometimes you have to move quickly to get your instruments out. Simply fit the pieces back into place. It helps if these knobs on the bottom are slightly loose, because as you can see, this frame member moves a little bit. This one has threads in it, so as long as that goes in there, the instrument will stay together. Get that one tightened down, leave this one and that one loose. Get the other frame piece. And usually I actually do this outside by the car, because most places I play, not all though, but most, are ADA accessible. And if it's ADA accessible, that means that all, everywhere you go they have ramps and elevators, big enough to set let a wheel trail, wheel chair through. And uh, this is about as wide as a wheelchair. So it will go through all the doors without any trouble, which is a nice advantage so I don't have to pack all those frame pieces. So I'll actually do all of this outside by my car before heading into the gig. And again, you want to leave this one and this one a little bit loose and the reason is, when you go to put the key bed on, you may have to angle the frame piece just a little bit. And it helps have the brakes on, again, so that frame doesn't significantly move. The key bed, as you can see, here, here, and on two places on the large piece, have, has inserts that those bolts must fit into. You have to be careful when you're lining this up that you get that. Key bed's not um, overly heavy, but it's also not, you know, the lightest things in the world. The bars actually might weigh a little bit more than the key bed itself. And again, great non-disconnecting bolts here from Majestic that just thread right up into the bottom of that key bed as long as you have it nicely aligned. At this point, I usually tighten the other parts of the frame so that it's not going to slip around on me. So that's just two more bolts on each side. reattach them to the bottom of the key bed and I leave them loose just a minute and then I pick it up on my foot get it a little high than what you would use when you're playing because the bars do weigh that damper bar down quite a bit now the resonators go in from underneath just like on most vibraphones and you want to be careful that you get it under the cover for the belt there. Don't worry about reattaching the belt just yet. Just fit those resonators in to each side.
You can reattach the belt now, or you can wait until the keys are on. Most of the time, I like to put the keys on first, because if I'm in a hurry at the gig, the belt is, the, the motor is a key part of my sound, but if they're ready to count off the first tune, that's something that can wait until the first set change. What I like to do is set it over the first resonator, and then try to walk it over there by turning the fans to get it onto the second one. And as you can see, with a little bit of practice, you can get those fans right in line with each other so that they move freely with the belt. And then cover it up to avoid any mishaps. The next step is just to set your keys back on the instrument. And of course, I move the keys in their own separate case. I never move them on top. I would recommend that even if you're, say, a band program, the extra few minutes it takes are well worth it because the weight of the keys, I feel, might be able to damage those slats if it's in the back end of a truck. But, regardless, that's not my situation. <laughs> of course, you want to get the, the cord in underneath of those over the top bar posts so that the keys don't pop up when you're pedaling. And like I said, usually, I will actually move the instrument with just the frame without the keys attached up to where, wherever we happen to be playing and then put the bars on. This keeps the bars in the case as long as possible and away from prying ears or prying eyes. Um, if you have to leave parts of your instrument places while you get directions or etc., even if there are trustworthy people to watch it, sometimes accidents can happen. I like to leave my bars in the case. I also usually transport it with the nice provided cover actually reinstalled on the key bed. I like to store it that way as well. So here at home, I can store it just like this. And you'll see that that cover gets nice and snug on top of that. Helps to keep all the corners of your key bed nice and neat, even though you're moving it in and out of cars, through door frames, etc. If you have any questions about the Majestic V7530S, feel free to email me at mark at Thank you for your time.